Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Big Bros Podcast. My name is Jeremy. Welcome. If it's your first time on the show, I'm joined by my lovely friend and co-host, Ilan. How are you, mates? I'm good, broski. How are we? I'm well. I'm well. Episode 77 today, and we are keen to dive into it as always. Now, I thought we should kick off the show by firstly thanking our listeners for tuning in last week. We've had some terrific feedback off the back of the episode with Caitlin, the superwoman that she is. So thank you for tuning in and go and check it out if you haven't yet because it's a juicy one, it's a bit different and um, we know you'll enjoy it. So on that note, let's dive into this week's episode and talk about life in our 20s. And what I mean by life in our 20s is, you know, we're all at different stages. I'm sitting here 24, you're sitting here 24 years old and we are doing very different things in our lives right now and the listeners may know that, may know that they might not know that. We've got friends in our friendship groups that are doing completely different things to what we're doing but we're all the same age and once we were all in school and we were all doing the same thing but now at 23, 24, there's probably not one of us in our friendship group that is actually all doing the same thing. We're all doing something that's very different and that can be very scary. It can be very overwhelming and it leaves a lot of us in our 20s thinking far out. There are so many options. There are so many choices. What do I do? Where do I start? Am I doing the right thing? Help me, please. I mean, that's life, isn't it? There's a cool law. It's known as Siegel's Law, which is the idea that a man with a watch knows what time it is. A man with two watches is never sure. And it speaks to the fact that oftentimes when we're paralyzed with all these options and there isn't one clear-cut thing to do, we become so paralyzed because we don't know what option to take, right? Because you're constantly in this game of opportunity cost, which is if you take one option... What are you going to miss out on by sacrificing all the other options that you could have taken? And I think your 20s is the first example of that. It's the first time in your life where you don't actually have appropriate guidance on what to do. Because for the first 18 years of our life, we did to some large extent have someone holding our hands, telling us you go to school, you do well in school and you know the rest will sort itself out. But in your 20s, this is the first kind of decade of your life where you're in your adulthood, where you're essentially forging your own identity. Now, that could be really exciting, but as we all know, it can also be insanely frightening. And the reason it's frightening is because paralysis of choice is very hard because we live now in a world, and let's actually compare the world we live in now to the world that existed maybe 60, 70 years ago. Nowadays, you finish school, you have so many options at your disposal. You can go to work, you can go to uni, you can pick up a trade, you can go travel, you can do so many things. Whereas 60, 70 years ago, you either got conscripted to go fight in the Vietnam War or you finished school, maybe did university and... Got arranged to get married. Got arranged to get married or, or you got married to the girl next door and you had a life, you worked for 60, 70 years of your life then you retired and then you died. So everyone kind of knew what their life had for them. I mean, you look at people who, who live on farms, right? They, you know, from the moment they're born, all they're doing is living on the farm. When they're of age, that's all they do. They live on the farm, they get married and that's all their life is. But that's not how it is nowadays, specifically for people who live in more urban areas and metropolitan areas. We have so many options at our disposals and... I think there's no clear cut way to tell you what to do. And I guess we can talk about it a little bit later. But I think in general, generally speaking, yeah, you can be patient with yourself and you can tell yourself like there's so many options and I need to be patient with myself. But at the end of the day, it is going to be difficult, I feel like. Yeah, it'll always be difficult because of that paralysis of choice. Think about just our friendship group. I like to talk about, you know, what's going on in our lives here gives a bit of anecdotal evidence and for you guys listening you know you might be able to relate to this I mean I sit here working full-time in your first year in my first year working full-time you know I've gone through the whole done four years at uni traveled bits and traveled at bits and pieces in between now I find myself working full-time you're sitting here next to me and You're still studying, so you're not even at that stage of working full-time. We have other friends in our friendship group that are 
about to embark on long-term travels for about six months and, you know, dropping everything to go and pursue traveling for six months and see where the wind takes them. We've got other friends who are, you know, have just gone to, to live overseas and, and, uh, and are embarking on what it's like to, to live overseas indefinitely. We've got others that have moved for work and are working remotely. So there's an abundance of different things going on and we're all the same age, you know, we've all grown up together, school, school together, and we're all at these different points now. And that's confronting for not just people looking at on the outside in thinking, well, here's a group of boys with all, and they're all at different stages, but it's also like overwhelming for us essentially, because we can often sit here and compare what we're doing to each other as well and think, here I am doing this and here you are, Ilan, doing that. And, you know, is that to say what I'm doing is the right way forward? And and likewise for you is what you're doing the right way forward. And we sit here and we compare and we chat. And I honestly think that a little bit of comparison is healthy. A lot of people say that comparison is the thief, thief of joy and you shouldn't compare because you're on your own pathway and you're writing your own chapters and it's it's you against you and yes that is true to a degree and i think it's only true to a degree because comparison allows you to work towards greater things sometimes it allows you to also self reflect on what you're doing in your life because you might see things happening in someone else's life pretty close to you and you might take inspiration from that and think that's actually really cool i might want to pursue that as well or you know what I wouldn't want to be doing that. I'm glad at what I'm doing right now. And that gives us validation and healthy validation. And I think we would be quite negligent to think as people in our 20s that we wouldn't that we don't compare. I think we everyone listening to this has that tendency to have compared in their life and to still probably compare. I do it you probably do it too. And I think we all naturally as humans like to do it to an extent. But that's where the catch is, is that it's it should be to an extent. Your pathway is your pathway, but still within that, draw inspirations from the others around you and use that to reflect on what you're doing in your life too. Yeah, I like that. And I think if you are doing some form of comparison, if there's someone in your friendship group where you look at them and you think, wow, I would I absolutely love to be where they are or, you know, I respect what they're doing, you let them know that, you know, you tell them that you're in their corner. But by the same token, if you're not happy, don't be afraid to reach out for support. And you tell them, look, I'm really, you know, struggling right now. I actually don't know what I'm doing with my life. And I look at you and you might think that they've got everything going for them. They might have that perfect job. They have the uni degree secured. They might be in that happy relationship, but maybe they're not as happy as you might think on the exterior. If they're your friend, definitely chat to them about those sort of things. Just ask them how they're going. But if you tell them that you're drawing inspiration from them, that's a powerful thing. And I reckon at the same time as well, you said that comparison can be healthy to an extent. I completely agree because it can almost serve as healthy competition and accountability, right? And what do good friends do? They keep one another accountable. And I think at the end of the day, you can't really judge what someone does with their life. So even if you disagree with their decision, for example, you and I might be like, why is this person going away for three, four years rather than staying at home and you know doing this sort of thing? I think that's a terrible thing to kind of criticize that person for because you're expecting them to live by the mold of what you've set out here. What I mean by that is you're expecting them to have the exact same values as you. You're expecting them to want to have the exact same reality as you as well at home. But the problem is everyone's got different values and everything and they have different things that they aspire to be. So I think when it comes to the different stages of your 20s conversation, there has to be an understanding that whatever someone's doing, hopefully it's in line with what makes them happy or if it's it's in line with also with what their values are as well. I think we see it as a threat and I think that's why people are quick to judge others about, you know, like you said, going away for three to four years rather than staying put here and finding a job. And oftentimes it can be our parents that are quite critical of those things because it's going against the grain. It's going against the norm of maybe what was normal for them in their generation. And when we do see that and and, and experience a bit of criticism, if that was us in that person's shoes, 
I think it comes from a sense of a bit of a, a, a bit of a threatening approach almost. It's a bit, yeah, like I'm I'm a bit intimidated by this person because they're doing something different, and it makes you therefore reflect internally on what you're doing naturally as a human and you're going to compare yourself naturally and that's why i think like in today's day and age there's so much stuff on the internet about avoid comparing yourself to others stop comparing yourself blah 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 and i think that's just only that's just only putting fuel to the fire i think if you just accept and surrender to the fact that you will naturally compare yourself to people and that is okay when done so healthily you will be a lot more content in whatever process is you are tackling at that point in life i think trying to abolish something entirely is never good no matter what it is in life it's never good all behaviors are i think necessary to a certain extent and I think this is one right here, some, some of that comparison. So you mentioned parents there before. Um, you made some really good points, but the thing you said about parents actually makes me think about this. Parents aren't, parents just want you to be happy and safe, right? And that might mean you taking the safe and secure option. It might mean you not relocating somewhere, putting yourself into an uncomfortable situation that might risk your survival as per evolutionary terms. That's why parents want to keep you kind of close and nearby because they'd rather you take the safe option and you be moderately happy than you take the uncomfortable option and be insanely fulfilled and extremely happy. So they still want you to be happy, but they'd rather you sacrifice the potential of how happy you can be if it means you'll be safe the entire process. And that's just a parental instinct, right? And I think if you're really stuck on what to do in your 20s, you'll be influenced by those voices. You'll be influenced by your parents and even by your friends because your friends might want the exact same thing for you they might just want you to be safe and secure but not necessarily truly fulfilled and that's usually i think we spoke about this last week with caitlin she mentioned the whole thing about finding purpose is first of all it doesn't have to be a job necessarily it's something that gets you going that gets you to wake up but at the end of the day we are putting ourselves in a situation for example when we live in our purpose where we'll have to still work hard we'll still be in uncomfortable situations right anything that is worth attaining is going to be hard and difficult and purpose isn't done for external accolades and that's the key thing it's done for our own sense of fulfillment and when parents for example or maybe even your friends who influence you tell you don't go traveling for this amount or don't take this job don't do this or don't do that a lot of the time they're informed by an opinion of external accomplishments meaning in their mind they're thinking well if you do this you're not going to get you know social credit credibility of some form you're not going to be getting that high job with the six figures you know so it's always kept important to remind yourself of if you are going to embark on any big decision in your 20s you have to understand are you doing it for yourself or are you doing it for some sort of external accolade as a young person in our 20s when it comes to work when it comes to career the external accolade is going to be a driving factor naturally you know when it comes to finding that career money is going to be a a driving factor and that could count as an external accolade can i quickly ask you something and this is what chris williamson always asks some of his guests if money and status were no object what would you do yeah i love that question i knew you were going to ask that question and um it's it's a great question because it really makes you reflect on I guess those career choices and those choices that you're making. And I think when it comes back down to it and yeah, you remove money and you remove that out of the equation, that is the true test to decipher whether someone is truly happy in what they're doing in that moment in time. And are they living their purpose? Because if chances are, if you, if that person asks themselves that question and they answer it honestly, and they tell you they're doing a specific behavior, maybe it's music, maybe they're creating music, creating art, Maybe they've got a business of some form, even though that requires money. Um, That's how you'll know they're living within their purpose because purpose isn't concerned with external accolades. It's only concerned with internal worth and internal fulfillment and meaning. Yeah, it's doing what you love. And like we spoke about last week, it's, it's that analogy that I gave about the Kinder Egg. You are not born with that internal manufactured predisposed purpose you have to try things in life to work out what that is you know and i think it's about basing it off of what are the things that make you happy ultimately you know is it being compassionate is it is it getting 
is it bringing other people up is it making other people feel better is it you know sport is it music whatever it is but it's about trying those things and working out what it is to to give you that fulfillment and you know mel robbins talks about this all the time because she has a lot of people coming to her and always complaining to an extent about what is going on in their 20s about that mid mid crisis point in your 20s and so many of us reach that crisis point and think what is going on what am i doing because of that one because of those factors that we spoke about earlier being that there are so many options and two also being that whole sense of comparison and 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 mel puts it simply as well she says you know what stop putting all that pressure on your 20s the the 20s isn't the be all and end all you've got your whole life ahead of you as well and i think we're so scared about that about what's to come because we think everything should be done now we've got that sense of urgency it's like if we don't have kids right now then we should be doing everything we have in our abilities right now because you know once kids come along you certainly can't do anything anymore that's what we're believed to think now based off social media based off economics based off you know how we're how we're meant to live one day you know buying a house all these factors but if you find the right person and that's where it comes back down to your core values finding the right person will be based off holding your core values true to yourself there's no reason why you can't experience these incredible things well into your life as well i'm not going to name them or shame them but we had this very great discussion a few weeks ago with one of our good friends who is um he's in his first year of full-time work and you know he's in the headspace now where he wants to find a serious relationship maybe a relationship where he can settle down maybe in the next three to five years don't quote me on that though um and you know we were having an interesting discussion with him which is he was saying he feels like he's running out of time to find you know the right one because at the end of the day the good ones run out early which is was his a bit of his philosophy and whilst I might disagree with that at the same time he was saying how he also wants to go traveling and he wants to have you know these experiences that are probably better served doing when you're single rather than when you're in a relationship because for example he might want to travel for like four to five months or maybe a two three month big holiday somewhere and he wants to probably have that sort of holiday without having a relationship so I remember we were sitting down I think you were there as well we we asked him almost like what do you value more in your life right now and that's not something you or I can answer for him, but it's something he needs to actually reflect on. Is he going to sit back and say, well, as much as I want to have single fun on this big holiday, maybe in South America, it might be worth for me to actually sit down and be like, well, if I want to put all this energy and investment into finding someone now, then if that person does come along, I'm not going to sacrifice that for some holiday so it's keeping in mind what values you hold dearly and actually making a cognitive assessment in the back of your mind of what is most you know important to you for in the next few years and you might not know what's most important but at least if you start thinking you get yourself into the frame of mind because you can start telling yourself and reminding yourself of what you value most because i think the real reason people get so stuck is because they don't know what they value more. They don't know Mm. if they value certain experiences over other experiences. And I think now when we're in in our 20s, it's so bloody confusing. You know what what doesn't help either? Is when people say that 20s, your 20s is going to be the best decade of your life. That's not not necessarily true. It's a decade of uncertainty. It's a decade of heartbreaks, uh, friendship losses, being broke. You know, there is so much stuff that can go wrong in your 20s and you might think, well, shit, if this is supposed to be the best decade of my life, fuck, it's going to get only worse because no one says your 30s are your best decade or your 40s. So it must be all downhill from here. That's not a good thing to tell someone who's already struggling with their mental health in their 20s, right? If you set that expectation up for them, they might struggle. Mm. Another thing that Mel touches on a lot, you mm. know, shout out to Mel Robbins. We love her. But um, yeah, that point you made about, you know, not recognizing your true values is a key point. But on that, I think it's also, we are kind of stimulated to want everything now. Yes. You know, true. so it, it might not be about not knowing what our true values are, because I think around mid twenties, a lot of us know what at least some of our true values are, you know. By this age, a lot of us have maybe gone through a breakup or a friendship loss 
or have had some form of challenge or mental health issue or just some form of hardship rather. We've, we've gone through some shit to recognize, okay, these are the things that I actually appreciate. We kind of have a good basis of what our values are to an extent. Can I challenge you on that? I think a lot of people, when we think of values, they're never phrased in a poor way. Like everyone values respect, loyalty, but the list could go on. We could list about 50 values, more like 20, but it's hard to determine if all 20 of those values are your core values. So what I mean there is we can often, we might know what values resonate with us, but we don't actually know which maybe three to five values are the ones that we want to live by. Because for example, you and I, might both value loyalty and we might both also value like openness to new experiences, you know, being in our um, uncomfortable, like in our discomfort zone. But what do we value more loyalty or, you know, living in our discomfort zone or growing or, you know, having an openness to a new experience. What I'm trying to say here is everyone has an idea of what kind of values they like, but not enough people actually have an understanding of which three to five values they have internally. Maybe, yes. I uh, yeah. That's and that a- makes a big di- difference because if you were actually clear on which values were the most important, important to you, then it would be way easier to make decisions in your life. Yeah, well, I think that just, I think that goes hand in hand with what I was going to say and that being, you know, the whole, the whole thing about wanting everything because if you want everything, then yes, you're not nailing down what are those key values that are important to you. Yes, you have those values that are maybe those you know, the ones that you mentioned, the loyalties and the fun and the respect and the adventure side of things. Yes, we've got all those values, but yes, you don't know what those core ones are. And that is because you want everything at the moment. You want all the pieces of the cake. You want to be single, but you want to be in a relationship. And, you know, being being in the summertime makes you feel like you want to be single, but then being in, in the wintertime makes you feel like you want to have a relationship being at home during during June, July when others are away makes you want to go and travel. But then being at work during the start of the year when you're more mentally there to want to work and make something for yourself that year, you know, you're, you, you feel content then. And it, it, everything is seasonal nowadays for so many of us in our 20s. Everything is so fleeting. Everything is so, I want this now, but I don't want it later. Or I want it later, but I don't want it now. And I think that... It, that comes from all of the things that we see on social media where people are saying, you can have it all. You can do anything that you want to do and you can have it all and, you know, start now. And I think all of that, you can have it all type messaging. One makes people feel very overwhelmed, but it also makes people lose a lot of their accountability to doing a task. It makes them just sporadic in their actions. Also not, rational maybe to an extent in in what they're thinking it makes them feel like they can just be very spontaneous and very spur of the moment which is which is fun and adventurous to an agree to a degree but it's like we need to have some some stability and some non-negotiables and some core pillars to what makes us a formidable person and i think that's part of growing up in in your 20s and developing relationships I feel like me personally, I truly respect those few people that have those core values, like you said, those three to five core values, those pillars and stick to them and aren't so sporadic and irrational in how they think. Knowing that they can be fun and adventurous, but also knowing that I know when to do that. I need to focus on X, Y, and Z right now. I can't have it all at the one time. I think it's all about creating a reality that you can fall in love with as well at the same time because this I can have it all mentality, it's very popular for people who don't know what they want to do, who are people who haven't built a reality that they love, that they're fulfilled by. So if you if you're if someone's telling me I can have it all, that means I'm not gonna ever be disappointed because I'm not missing out on anything. So it's a bit of FOMO. But yeah, as we know FOMO, exactly it's right. It's essentially FOMO. And the thing is the best um antidote to FOMO is making sure that your reality is better than the fantasy you build of other people or of what they might be doing and yeah for example on those cold July nights in Melbourne we might be seeing all the cold July mornings rather when you wake up and you doom scroll and you see people are in Europe 
in EOS in the nice sunshine getting fucked up every night, you might think, wow, it'd be great to be there as well. But at the same time, if you can kind of say, acknowledge, yeah, it'd be great to be there, but then also be like, I'm really excited for the week I've got ahead. I've got this on, I've got, I'm seeing these people, I'm getting involved in this, then that's fine. And I think it's always going to be natural to entertain in the back of our heads this sort of FOMO where it's like, it'd be great to be in this situation. But as long as you can circle back and remind yourself of, okay, well, what do I have here that actually genuinely keeps me excited? So maybe we're just not as grateful as a generation then. Maybe we don't sit back and reflect on what we have got right now. Because if we did, maybe we wouldn't be so sporadic in wanting everything. Yeah, I feel like gratitude will only help. I also wouldn't shit on people as well, because if you are on social media and you see people who are living their best life because it's really just a highlights reel and you're really unhappy with your situation, you can jump to conclusions and you start. You might start being insanely upset with your situation and you might start thinking, well, why is it so easy for them and not easy for me? And you go down this spiral of feeling sorry for yourself and that does no one any favors. Most importantly, it doesn't do you any favors. So I actually really like what you said there. Potentially, we're being less grateful, but we might be less grateful for a variety of reasons that might not necessarily be our fault like you said as well though um nothing is always as good as it seems as well Mm. you know you're seeing these posts of people getting fucked up in eos and having the best time of their life but that person could also be waking up completely hung over the next morning having mad anxiety and thinking what am I doing with with my life? I am 25 years old and feel like an absolute degenerate when I have people in my circle that are working and making good money for themselves and are living a very fit lifestyle. So it works the other way. That person overseas right now might be thinking, I wish I was you know, knuckling down with work where here we are thinking, well, I wish I was maybe on the other side and yeah, enjoying that sunshine, looking over some beautiful sceneries in greek sunset mornings i mean it's never as good as it seems no matter which side you look at it and i think having that perspective it is, it is a mature mature perspective because it involves a lot of hindsight because in the moment we just, we just think wow i want to be there i want to be doing that it, it it must be better it's that grass is greener approach exactly and i think that's the whole debate here is being able to forge a reality that you're so happy with at home and the thing is if you want to forge a really cool reality at home as well you can integrate every little bits and bobs of the things that you want to do so you don't need to pick one sort of journey for yourself and have to sacrifice all the other things you want. For example, if you still want to travel a lot, you can still travel without, you know, that having to consume your entire work, consuming your family and relationships and all the stuff you've got going on at home. You can, as you've beautifully said so many times, if you, there's a will to want to travel, you can still organize it and, you know, make time during the year. And I think most people intuitively know that, but I think just with this whole different archetypes of your twenties, like different lives that people live if you are feeling stuck the the most simplest sort of recommendation i could give is knowing like literally writing down 20 values that you've got that you think that resonate with you and then ask yourself why each of those 20 values resonate with you like is there an internal feeling that you feel that when you think of that value you're like yeah it's really important to me you'll find that you don't have that exact same feeling for all 20 of those values and maybe they're only like five or ten but ask yourself when you're drilling down and you know trying to figure out which values are most important to you literally write down why is this value most important to me doing this exercise you'll probably find that about three to five values down or rather when you've got three to five values down those are probably going to be your core values that you want to live by Mm, i like that because you're attaching a maybe a memory or maybe an experience to the value as to why you like it it's not like you're just writing down loyalty responsibility love affection you're not shopping listing it you're actually attaching reasoning as to why that is a value and a perfect example of for example someone might value loyalty in a relationship or just loyalty in general why do i value loyalty someone might ask well because i got betrayed okay and why is that important to loyalty well I never want to feel like I did for those few months. It ruined me and I would never ever inflict that on someone else. 
So this is the value I want to live by. So every decision I make from here on out is going to be in service of that value. Bang. Almost like teal paragraphing it. Yeah, Topic, teal. evidence, explain and link. Yeah. Yeah. I think you got it all there. But you do that with a bunch of values, right? One of those values might not be the stereotypical, oh, I value loyalty, respect. It could be, I value openness to new experience and cultures. Okay. Well, what behaviors and things can you do that would be in service of that value? And that could literally just be traveling. Or it could be going to a different suburb in your town and eating a different cuisine of food. Love that. That's a new experience. So assuming you're doing things like that, you'll be happy because you're feeling fulfilled and you know and you'll know you're fulfilled when you're doing these things and for example you know you can say yeah i'm doing this in service of my values so i think that's a really helpful exercise for anyone to do in their 20s but it does require just a bit at least half an hour to an hour of just sitting alone with a pen and paper and just asking yourself that question. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's intentional mate and i think a lot of people will find benefit in that because it's easy to just say like, do some meditation, write down something you're grateful for, write down your core values. But here we are, this is a bit more of an intentional exercise and anything that is worth having takes a little bit of effort, you know, and this is effortful. This is intentional. So if it means taking an hour out of your day to even come up with two values, one value even, really thinking about what that is, attaching that experience, that memory to it, and then linking back as to why that is important. I reckon that'll serve you so much good for the future as well, going into any form of experience in the future. I couldn't agree more. On that note, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If there's someone in your life who, you know, you're listening to this episode and you think they're going to benefit from it, do send it across to them. I think that, you know, your 20s, Again, they're going to be probably one of the hardest decades of your life. Probably the hardest. We're still, we're, we're figuring it out. I mean, you know, it's not easy for us. And some of you listening might think these guys have it all worked out. And believe me, we bloody don't. And hopefully a lot of these episodes have shown that we don't because ultimately I think that's why we, we, we're doing this podcast um, because we feel like it's a reflection of our lives and what we're experiencing in our lives. So I think a lot of these topics and episodes can show that we we well and truly do not have shit figured out. No, and <laughs> but talking about it helps us get there. Yeah, and at least, you know, brainstorm, brainstorming the things that we want to do to make ourselves happier does go a long way. And that's what the podcast is essentially for us. Absolutely. So on that note, guys, happy Tuesday. Have a good week. Flick us a like, flick us a follow, and we can't wait to hear what you guys have to say on that note goodbye see you later lots of love